In addition to taking half a million from Russian oligarchs and buying the silence of the president's mistresses, uh, Essential Consulting was also a massive pay-to-play pay to pay slush fund. Um, Cohen would basically go around to big corporations with business before the government and promise them access to Donald Trump and his advisors in exchange for large sums of money. AT&T was trying to push a merger through and fight net neutrality rules, so they paid off Cohen. A big drug, comp a big drug company called Novartis heard that Trump promised to lower drug prices, so they paid off Cohen. Um, I guess, first of all, how common is this? Because, you know, uh, there is this relationship in D.C. where uh, a lot of companies pay people they believe to be close to a president to sort of get advice, and it falls short of the legal definition of lobbying, but it's clearly trying to purchase some sort of influence and access. Well, I think... You're hearing from a lot of seasoned Washington hands and reporters who've been around the block and dined at the Capitol Grill multiple times saying, this is just how things are done. How things and are done is terrible. <laughs> yes, that's kind of true, but it's also not really true. Because, yes, there is a lot of people. There are a lot of people who go around and oversell their access to pretty naive corporations and foreign entities about what they're going to be able to deliver. And... So that does happen. But what is different here is a couple things. One, the amounts of money we're talking about are pretty extreme, right? Like, so I think to say that Novartis, who was who ended up paying $1.2 million, I believe, over time, that that is an amount of money for one individual that is pretty unheard of in how, lo quote unquote, lobbying is done. Apparently it's, apparently, it's way, way more than Novartis paid any of their lobbyists. So you look through all their lobbying yeah, records, and even like the most expensive lobbying firm that they hire, it's nothing compared to what they paid Michael fucking Cohen for one meeting. Yeah, so that's that's that is um, so that that's alarming, or at least it suggests something untoward. Second, the we let's not just overlook the fact that like there is this gray area between like on the outskirts of lobbying that should that is unregulated that should be really regulated, which is basically strategic consulting where people with large networks and great connections get quote unquote political intelligence and share it with companies, but then, but don't technically advocate for um, a specific policy or advocate on behalf of the client. And therefore they don't have to register as lobbyists, which means they don't have to disclose things. And they sort of live in this sort of in the shadows of the DC influence game. If some of these reports are true that what Trump, what Cohen was promising was specific meetings specific access but to deliver on a specific request of the of these clients then he was almost certainly lobbying and in violation of the law now on the list of crimes michael cohen is alleged to have committed violating the lobbying registration failing to register as a lobbyist is probably pretty small but it is a crime and we should not overlook moderately significant crimes from close associates of the president of the united states in a normal world that would be a gigantic deal, and it should be here too. And we can't just sort of poo-poo it because that means he's not guilty of treason or conspiracy against the United States or the other crimes that uh, people allege he may have committed. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so there's a question, there's a legal question, which is how much legal trouble is Cohen in, which we just talked about, and also is Trump liable as well? Um, those questions are: Did Trump know about what Cohen was doing? Was Trump getting any money himself? knowing that Trump doesn't like when aides, you know, or people close to him profit off of him and usually likes to k take a cut on his own. Um, there's a lot of questions about, you know, whether Trump A, knew about this and B, was getting money himself. So that seems like that's, you know, that's the Trump liability. Um, there's also a, a larger political question here, which is how drained is this fucking swamp, right? <laughs> I mean, this, this, this president... You know, up till like the weeks before the election was talking about Hillary Clinton being bought off and draining the swamp in Washington. And it's become so fucking comical at this point that now we have in the Trump administration, the biggest companies and richest assholes can just pay off Republicans to get tax cuts and special favors while most people's premiums are going up. The cost of their prescription drugs are going up. at and jacking up their phone bills. Their Internet isn't free anymore. And, you know, these people can't afford to pay a bribe to some dumb shit mobster lawyer who's friends with Donald Trump. Um, and they can't afford to make huge donations to pay off politicians. Uh, and that's the government right now. 
And to me, that seems like that's something that Democrats can go out there and run on. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Donald Trump ran as a populist reformer and has governed as a corporatist crook. And Democrats have to make that case. What is happening in Washington is all tied together. We've been saying this for a long time. The argument from Democrats should be you're running against the the chaos and the corruption in Washington and Wall Street. And then you have like literally a phone book, if anyone remembers what a phone book was, of data points to point that back up. So I think that's what they should do. This Cohen thing is one more example of that, and we should use it because it says something about what is happening in Washington and what and why we need change. And Democrats are the change this time, which we were not last time. So we can more uh, enthusiastically grasp that change mantle than we were able to do in 2016.